Year-end close. Everybody's favorite topic this time of year. So for those of you that have never met me and don't know me, my, my name is Diane Sider. I am the GP Practice Director at Turnkey. I've been um, at Turnkey now for a little over 11 years. Um, I've been doing consulting. Thank you. <laughs> um, I've been in the GP space for well over 15 years. Uh, prior to becoming a consultant, I was an end user. Uh, most of the people on my team have an accounting background and were prior end users. So um, we're very familiar, obviously, with the software. And so before we kind of dig into year end, I just wanted to um, kind of give you an update on our team. I know, you know, Chris talked about the digital transformation and how I know there's a lot of um, news out there, especially from different ERP um, competitors that say GP's dead and, you know, um, there's just a lot of negativity out there. People are hating on our product, but um, we are continuing to expand our department. We have added this year several new folks in the manufacturing and supply chain space. We hired a new support person. And um, Shelly, who used to do manage our support, is transitioning over into more of a consulting project-based role. So we're continuing to grow, and we um, aren't anticipating any, you know, we're not taking the foot off the gas at this point. So, um, so that's just a little update on us. Anyhow, so let's get to year-end close. Maybe. Okay. So year-end close, every year GP comes out with a service pack. And in the service pack, there are some updates that typically um, affect year-end, mostly around the purchasing and the payroll module. So in one of Chris's slides, we saw kind of the GP roadmap and how, you know, GP is going to continue to be enhanced um, through the next few years. So support for GP 2013, that has ended. So if anybody is on payroll and they're on GP 2013, they will not get any payroll tax updates at this point. We have um, started contacting, you know, all of our group who use payroll and who were on 2013 um, back in August, September to get the ball rolling, make sure everybody's updated and current so that they can start processing payroll in 2019. So GP 2015, there is a year-end service pack for them. This is the last year. Um, for mainstream support, that will end 2020. And then it will go after that point. It won't receive any more tax or year-end updates. So there's a little bit of life left on that. Um, GP 2016, a service pack came out. Obviously, that will run through July of 2021. And then GP 2018, the very latest version, that service pack is also out. And um, that's going to run, it looks like through at least 2023. So let's go on. So each service pack contains a list of bug fixes. I have a document um, that details that lists out all of the bug fixes in each uh, service pack. And so you can um, make a note on your form. Um, and we can send that document out to you. So for 2018, there are bug fixes and changes to workflow, to the web client, to the purchasing, and the payroll modules. So that's a pretty big, comprehensive service pack. Um, for 2016, there were some changes and updates to workflow, purchasing, and payroll. 
And then for version 2015, it was a change to payroll only. And you only need that update if you are printing ACA forms out of GP. So overview. All of these updates, all of these service packs are cumulative. So if you're on GP 2018, you'll now be on GP 2018 R2, which is a service pack. And so what we always recommend is you do the test upgrade and then the live upgrade. Um, you know, test any customizations, third-party products, business processes, just to verify everything's working properly before we do the live upgrade. We always do a test upgrade and then a live upgrade um, to give you a chance to make sure, you know, everything's in good working order. Because these updates are cumulative, it means that all prior service packs, hot fixes, um, compliance and urine updates are included in the most, re most recent version. So obviously the update must be installed on all servers and workstations um, that have GP. How many of you guys handle upgrades yourselves? I know for most of you, we do them for you. Um, okay. So if you were to tackle this yourself, obviously we recommend you back up Dynamics and all of the GP company databases, export all of your forms and reports, back up the modified forms and reports dictionary, and then configure the test environment to test the upgrade prior to running in the live environment. Again, the document that we have has much more detailed information, um, and we can provide that to you. Planning. Planning for your year-end close. It's always good to have a plan. So you want to select an optimal time. I know, you know, some of you are more services. Some of you are supply chain. So that means physical inventories and such. Um, so you always want to plan for adequate time. Obviously, year-end is a big crunch for the accounting group because you've got auditors coming in and, you know, all sorts of things going on. So, um, you know, plan accordingly. Leave yourself enough time. Don't try to uh, rush through it. Develop a work plan. Um, we're happy to have a call. You know, if you have any questions or need any planning or just kind of want to run through um, what the process looks like, you know, we can definitely schedule a call and talk about any, you know, specific questions or whatever. Um, develop a contingency plan. Always have backups before you start any kind of year-end close process because we can always restore to the backup, you know, if something goes haywire. So steps to complete before year end, back up all um, existing data and code. So if there's any customizations, make sure there's a backup of that. Back up the databases. Optional, perform check links on all tables. How many of you guys do that at year end? It's a good process to run. Sometimes, depending on how much data you have in the system, that can take a while. We have some folks that start running it on a Friday night, and it runs all weekend. Um, so, you know, again, you want to plan accordingly. Maybe run that a week or two before you do the close. That way it's out of the way, but again, you're left plenty of time. Post-closing, so after you've closed all the modules, Take another set of backups, again, just in case. You know, I stand, for those of you that have been through this before, and I wasn't here last year, so I know Mike um, Shank actually did the urine close last year, but there's 
for each module, it's like run a backup, run a backup, run a backup. I feel like a um, broken record, but better to be safe than sorry. So, all right. So year end closing. Microsoft recommends that we close the modules in a specific order. We start with inventory, then we do receivables, then we do payables, fixed assets. Is anybody using analytical accounting? We, that comes next. And then finally, the last step is the general ledger. Payroll is independent and is based on, you know, the last payroll of 2018 and the first payroll of 2019. So it's an independent close. The following modules do not have a year-end close routine, sales order processing, purchase order processing, bank rec, multi-currency, HR, project accounting, service calls, contract administration, and preventative maintenance. So there's no year-end close routine to run for those specific modules. If you're using sales order and purchase order processing and inventory, it is highly recommended that you reconcile these modules in addition to the inventory module prior to closing. Again, reconciling the inventory module can take a bit of time. So you maybe want to kick that off, you know, over a weekend or something, again, just to make sure it has time to process. So we reconcile in the following order. Sales order processing, purchase order processing, then inventory, because everything kind of affects inventory. So we save that one for last. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions yet? Or are you saving them for the end? Okay. All right, so you're in closing procedures. We start with inventory. So changes made in inventory with the service pack, um, there aren't any changes to the inventory module. When should close be done? The inventory module should be closed at the end of your fiscal year. I think I lost the mic. Okay. It's hiding. Um, the inventory module should be closed at the end of the fiscal year before any new transactions for the new year are entered. That's when it's recommended. There is no calendar year end close for inventory. So you know some modules have a fiscal and a calendar year end. For um, inventory, you just get the one, the one close. It's not two separate. What does the year end close process do? For inventory, it transfers all summarized current year quantities, cost sales amounts to the last year column or field on reports for items which you are maintaining summarized sales history. It also updates each item's beginning quantity from the quantity on hand at each site. And third, it zeroes the quantity sold field in the qu item quantity maintenance window. So it really affects your reporting and some of the inquiries. During the inventory year-end close, it gives you the option to remove discontinued items, sold purchase receipts, sold lot attributes, and it also gives you the option to update item standard cost. To remove the items, one of the caveats, and I think it's in, a, in another slide, um, the quantity on those items has to be zero. So, so what steps should you take to close the module? First, you should enter and post all purchase order processing invoicing, sales order processing, project accounting, building material, field service, manufacturing, everything that feeds into inventory, 
all of those transactions should be posted for the current year, 2018. Post all inventory transactions and batches for the current year. Complete a physical inventory if you do one at year end. Reconcile inventory quantities. We talked about that just a minute ago. Stop and pop first, then the inventory module. Print all of your reports. Make a backup. Run the year-end close routine. You can close, then close the fiscal periods for the inventory module um, for the current year, 2018, and then make another backup. So make a backup before you run the close, another backup after. We like our backups. So once we get the inventory module closed, we move to receivables. There were no changes to receivables in any of the year-end updates. <clears throat> when should you close the year? The module. If you're on a calendar year, the year end process should be done at the end of your calendar year prior to posting any transactions. Um, if you're on a fiscal year, you have fiscal year end close, calendar year end close, so you should run that at the end of your fiscal year, obviously. So receivables management is not completely date sensitive, meaning you have options. If you do not close your module, um, it doesn't necessarily break anything, um, but where you find discrepancies is really in your smart list report. All of your inquiry reports you can look at um, amount sense, you know, for the current fiscal year or the current calendar year but your smart list reports, any year-to-date sales, any last year sales, um, that information only gets updated by actually running through and closing the module. So if you use smart list reports for that type of information, it becomes very important to close the module. So what steps should we take to close receivables? Similar to inventory, we should post all sales and receivables transactions for 2018. Make a pre-year-end pre close backup. Run through the year-end close routine. Close the fiscal periods again for the sales module close the tax year, and then make a post year-end close backup. Two backups per module. Does anybody have any questions on closing receivables? See, backup, backup, backup. <clears throat> So in 2018, there are changes to payables management with that year-end service pack, um, the 1099-DIV form was updated, and also the 1096 form was updated. So when should the purchasing or payables year-end close be done? Similar to sales and inventory, at the end of your fiscal or calendar year, or both. Because again, you have the option to close the fiscal and then to close the calendar year. Um, on the payable side, what happens is the fiscal close closes out all like the year-to-date um, vendor spend type things and then the calendar year end close zeroes out like the 1099 information. So that's how it separates. 
it transfers the 1099 amounts from the year-to-date column to the last year column for the calendar year end close. Fiscal year end close transfers all the other amounts from, yes, sir? Um, curious here, on, if you cross the transactions, say, for calendar year to new year before you close, then are your smart list reports going to not be quite right after that? Yeah. So what some people do is if you can't close right away, um, some people will enter 2019 data and kind of hold it in a batch. So they enter it and they just don't post it. Um, I'm wondering, do we still, does anybody know over there, my team, do we still have those scripts? that we used to run that would kind of correct the data if people didn't close timely. There were scripts at one point that Microsoft had provided to us for people that didn't hit the close just right and their smart list reports got out of whack. I'm sure we have them somewhere. But that's just only going to affect like year-to-date reports. You right, right. That's days. just the smart list reports. It, right. it affects the year-to-date columns on the smart list reports. You can still do from January to 12, you know, on a report and you get that information. Yeah. It's just a, if it's a year-to-date column. Yep. Hey, Diane, we have another question online. Um, I was asking, do you have any suggestions on how to essentially close out the transaction prior year before doing all this? Also, in the event prior, in the event prior year transactions were found during year end close procedures, how did those get pushed back in? Did you catch all that? So it is tricky, kind of navigating those first couple of days because obviously, come January first, you may not have all the vendor invoices received yet for 2018. So there is going to be that delay. Um, the day you hit the close button is the day that the year-to-date amounts get zeroed out. So if you close and then you find some 2018 invoices come in after the fact, it's going to show up in the 2019 year-to-date total. Um, Like I said, some people kind of hold off, depending on how many days it is, they'll hold off and keep the 29 data. You know, they can enter it into GP, they just don't post the batches. They keep it in a batch and don't post. I don't know if that helps. Some, sometimes people can swing it, other times people have to cut checks and it, you know, creates a problem. It's always tricky to kind of navigate the cutoff and it's never a perfect, you know, it's never a perfect science. There's always going to be something, it seems, that you didn't catch. Or... Like I said, though, I think we have scripts somewhere, depending on what version of GP you're on, that we can run that actually kind of fixes the data after the fact for you. So if we do run into an issue and you guys do rely heavily on some of the smart list reports, you can contact us and we can um, run through that for you. So again, steps to close payable, post all transactions uh, for the current year, print a historical age trial balance report with options, print the vendor period analysis report if you're closing the fiscal year, install the payroll year end update, it's optional, but if you are printing 1099 dividends or uh, the 1096 form. I think for 20 version 2016 or 2018, you should get that service pack in um, so that those forms are updated. So when you print those out for 1099s, they print correctly. Print and verify 1099 statements using the print 1099 window. You can always reprint 1099s for previous years. So just because we closed 2018 doesn't mean you can't go back and print your 1099s for 2018. It's the date, that data is there and it's stored 
so you can rerun those as necessary. Of course, we're at that point where we need to make a pre-year-end backup. Then we run through the close routine, fiscal year, calendar year, both, if you're on a calendar year. Again, optional, but it's good practice to go into the fiscal periods and close all of the 2018 periods for payables. <coughs> Make a final backup after all of that's been done. So it says all transactions for the calendar year should be posted and 1099 should be printed before closing the calendar year. Um, again, the, 10, the printing of 1099s is not date sensitive, so you can go back and reprint those if needed. The year end close does not affect really printing of the 1099s. Does everybody know how to update vendor 1099 information? So maybe you add a new, a new vendor in 2018 and they got set up not as 1099 and then later um, they were switched to 1099. So all of the payments throughout the year maybe aren't included. Does everybody here know how to update their vendor 1099 information? If you don't, or if you have questions, um, the document, again, that you can ask for has all of that information in it and screenshots. Fixed assets. That wasn't really in our list of modules to close. I'm thinking back now. But fixed assets module has a close. How many of you use fixed assets in GP? We just went through this, didn't we? <laughs> There's no new functionality to fixed assets in the year-end service pack. Um, fixed asset year-end close should be processed after payables management is closed. That's the recommendation because obviously payables can feed in to the fixed asset module. Um, so we want to make sure that's closed first. If you have multiple books in fixed assets, you can close those separately, meaning you can close your corporate or internal book first for your internal depreciation, and then you can hold off and close the tax book uh, maybe a little bit later after the auditors come back with adjustments or whatever. But caveat here, even though they can be closed separately and don't have to be closed at the same day, they all, all the books need to be closed for 2018 before you're able to run depreciation in 2019. So you have a little bit of time, but not a lot of time, because you're going to want to run depreciation, obviously, in January pretty quick. Diane? Yes? Yeah? OK. Uh, if you close AP you make the update 1099 information for the vendors still? Yes. Yes, you can. So the question was, can you make edits to the vendor 1099 information after you close the payables module? And the answer is yes. Um, again, the 1099 information is, is date sensitive. So there is you know, the 2018 data is separate from the 2019 data. Um, it's the smart list reports <coughs> that the year end or the year end close affects. And updating the 1099 vendor data doesn't really affect that smart list. Thanks. So so in fixed assets, what happens during the module close is all the year-to-date amounts get zeroed out and they move to the last year column. Um, in previous versions of GP, 
there were no good historical reports to run. So this was one of the modules that you had to run all of your reports before you closed the module because that information disappeared. Um, they've since fixed that in the newer versions of GP. So now you can go back and run, uh, you know, prior year depreciation reports historically. So to close the fixed asset module, similar to payables, receivables, inventory, um, perform, you know, close out the payables module to so make sure everything's posted and closed out there first. Enter all your fixed asset transactions through the last day of the current year. Depreciate all assets through the last day of the current year. Fixed assets will give you some really weird data if you depreciate through December 30th instead of through December 31st. So you want to be very careful with that year-end date. Always check your fixed asset calendar to make sure it's built correctly because that can get out of whack, especially if you are in fiscal year, as we found out. <laughs> so it's always a good check every year um, to go back in and check that. Verify that all of the quarters are set up correctly, too. That's part of the calendar build process. Create a backup, obviously, and then run through the year-end close. One thing you don't want to do here is you do not want to go into the fixed asset book and just change the year to the next year. You want to run through the year-end close process. We've had people try to kind of skirt the system and change the year so that they could run depreciation in 20. 19, um, it just doesn't work. You can't, you have to go through the year-end close process. So it's okay if you close the GL first and close the fixed assets <laughs> later. You know, um, GP allows you to post any transactions to the last closed year. So. I mean, it's not recommended. Ideally, you'd close fixed assets first, but again, reminder, do not flip the current fiscal year on the book window. Analytical accounting. They've also enhanced that in, in newer versions of GP. It used to have its own kind of separate year-end close process, um, and now it's included. So, you do want to verify um, that all your analytical accounting data is um, accurate and that everything is posted, but it will pick up and be updated as part of the GL year-end. <coughs> So depending on whether you're using the legacy or the data mark in Management Reporter, um, there are some scripts that sometimes need to be run after um, year-end close for analytical accounting for things to uh, report properly. So again, analytical accounting automatically now closes with General Ledger. Um, there are scripts, and again, in the document we'll provide for you, um, there will be a link to those scripts for you. Very important, make sure that analytical accounting is installed and enabled on the workstation 
that you're running the GL year-end close from. Because if it's not, bad things will happen. <laughs> that data will not be updated properly. Those <coughs> analytical accounting tables won't be updated properly. So now we're at GL. How many people close GL close to year end? And how many people like hold off and wait a few months? Do we have people that wait? We do ours at fiscal year end, which is in June. Yeah. So GP allows you to post to the last closed year, meaning on January 1st, if you wanted, you could close the general ledger. And then when the auditors come in <coughs> in March and they give you some adjusting entries, you can go back and enter those in 2018. GP knows that that year's been closed, so it will automatically roll balance sheet account balances forward and it will automatically roll P&L activity into retained earnings. So you don't have to go through a second year end closed process. Once it's closed, GP knows and it will act accordingly. So I know, you know, sometimes you've got to run a balance sheet. Um, and so keeping that 2018 open prohibits you from running a balance sheet, you know, in 2019 because you don't have the beginning balances, so. So the GL year-end close moves all open year transactions to the GL 30,000 table, which is the historical table. It also creates a BBF journal entry so that all your balance sheet account balances roll forward. Anybody on GP 2013 and newer, um, now it will automatically clear out or zero out any unit or statistical accounts that you have set up. Obviously, the P&L accounts, all of that rolls then into the retained earnings account. All P&L accounts should have a zero balance at the beginning of the year. So one of the things that Laura Kane is going to talk about during tips and tricks is how do you ensure that all of your GL accounts are set up properly? Because if you have an account that is set up as a balance sheet account and it's really a P&L, that balance will roll forward. So it's important to review your accounts to make sure they're set up properly. When GP closes the year, it uses period zero for those beginning, for that kind of um, year end you know, retained earnings update. So while you can't reprint the year-end close report, you could run a smart list on that period zero activity and pretty much recreate it if you had to. So to close the GL. Complete all of the posting and closing procedures for all the other modules. Post any final adjusting entries. Obviously, you don't have the auditor adjusting entries yet. Print an account list to verify the posting a type. Is this a balance sheet or a P&L account? <clears throat> Close the last period of the fiscal year that's going into the fiscal periods window and making sure that all of 2018 is closed. Perform any file maintenance on the financial series group of modules. That again is check links and um, which we've probably run 
a week or two before, hopefully. Make a backup. If you're not making backups when you close the modules, definitely, definitely make a backup before you close the GL. Microsoft recommends you printing a detailed trial balance report. Not a bad idea. Um, also, print your final year in financial statements. Just so you have something to compare to, after you run through the close, you can review those reports, run them again, review. Set up the new fiscal year. Make sure that's set up before you run through the year and close. It is highly, highly advisable to have everybody out of GP when you run through the year and close process. You take a good backup. You don't want anybody entering any information in because if you have to restore from that backup, all that data is going to be lost. So have everybody get out. Um, most, if not all, of your systems are backed up overnight. So if somebody comes in early one morning and runs through the close process, you know, you have last night's backups to go back to. Make another backup um, <laughs> after the fact. So just some tips here. Always have a current backup before you close the year. What happens in GP when GP is going through the year end close practice or process is the database size expands temporarily. And so what we have seen in the past, not so much nowadays, it used to happen a lot more often when servers had smaller um, space. But because the size expands, it pretty much doubles in size, your databases during the process. Sometimes it gets stuck mid-close. Um, and then, you know, we have all sorts of errors. So having a backup, we can always restore and and kind of troubleshoot and see why it errored out. Most people now, though, have enough server space where that isn't an issue any longer. But So again, make sure that there's enough room for the files to double in size. Um, it does look like the process hangs around 50%. Don't panic. Don't start clicking around because you could interrupt the process by clicking around. So I always recommend you click process and then you just kind of sit on your hand until it completes because when people start panicking, then bad things happen. Ours took about 20 hours, so that's a long time to sit on your hand. Yeah. It took 20 hours? Oh, because of the analytical accounting. Whew. For health reasons, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> you can get up and stretch every so often. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you are unfamiliar and you've never run through the year-end close process by yourself, we recommend that maybe you run through it in the test company first, just to kind of see how everything behaves and um, you know, if anything breaks or you run into any issues. Like I said, one of the um, recommendations is use a smart list to help you identify the posting types in all your accounts. And Laura's going to show you that in a few minutes during tips and tricks. A few other caveats. Some of you will close to divisional retained earnings accounts, meaning um, all the P&L activity roles may be at the department level or division level um, instead of to one retained earnings account. So um, if that's the case, you may get um, an error saying that, you know, you have an account set up um, and no retained earnings account that corresponds with that department or division. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you use analytical accounting or currency translation, it will take longer to complete. Be patient. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Not 20 hours. Yeah. Let it run overnight. Wow. Um, I ran across this, and it says some users elect to turn off currency translation prior to the close to help speed things up. I don't necessarily know that that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> is anybody in here using currency translation? I don't think so. Okay. So if you run into any issues, we're here to help. So reach out to one of us. Um, you know, we're happy to help. Again, the beginning balance journal entries are all dated period zero. So if you need to recreate a year-end close report, you can run a smart list on that period zero, and it should um, kind of recreate that journal entry for you. So payroll. It's our last module to close. How many of you are using payroll? Several. So there were several changes made to the payroll um, in the year-end service pack. The 1099-R, some of the fields were moved around, box 7. Um, there were no W-2 or W-3 or W-4 changes, form changes. There aren't any EFW-2 form changes. There are several Affordable Care Act changes, though. So if you're running payroll, it's imperative that we do the year-end service pack for you, for you guys. So when should payroll be closed? Obviously, after all current year pay runs have been completed, make a backup. You want to do it before you need to process any pay runs in the new year. So um, for payroll clients, you kind of have to time it in between the last and the first. The payroll year-end close creates the year-end wage file, which contains the annual wage information used to generate W-2s, W-3s, 1099s, EFW-2s, that's the magnetic media, uh, 1095Cs, 1094Cs for the year being closed. So you have to do it in order to get those reports out and W-2s to your employees. What steps to close payroll? Verify that you've installed the latest service pack. Complete all pay runs for the current year. Complete all month-end, period, and quarter-end procedures for the current year. Make a backup. Make sure, again, the year-end update is installed if it hasn't already been. That usually comes out uh, mid to end of October or early November, I think, at the latest, right? Or did it come out later? Do we know? It's in that time frame. Create the year-end wage file. Make a, new, make a backup again. And then verify all your W-2 information Verify that everything looks to be correct. Once payroll is closed for 2018, then you want to install the payroll tax update, which updates the taxes for 2019. Is anybody publishing W-2 information to the self-service portal in GP? Does anybody know there is a self-service portal in GP? <laughs> so in previous versions or older versions of GP, there was a companion product called Business Portal where employees could log in and they could look at their payroll data. 
um, with GP 2015 forward, the business portal went away, but now there is a um, employee self-service portal. So they can log in and get their W-2 information and other payroll-related information um, on the portal. So these are the tables that get updated um, in the payroll module when year-end close is run. We do have sometimes the need, obviously, to edit or change W-2 information. You can manually edit it, um, but you know you want to do that early on. You don't want to um, wait until you're running 2019 payroll. So you want to verify that everything's accurate um, at the time when you're closing. So again, we have a year-end Word document handout, and it has all of links to all the KB articles. It goes into a lot more depth, closing each module. We'll be happy to send that out to anybody that needs it. So again, just make a little note on the bottom of your form, and we will send that over to you. And then again, you know, if you guys have any questions or you want to um, set up a call, you know, to kind of plan um, your year-end close, do not hesitate to reach out to any of us. We're happy to help. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Yes, ma'am. So we're on the fiscal year that starts in October, so we do all of our year-end stuff at that time. But did you say is there anything we need to do to close out just the calendar year? So for payables and receivables, there is a calendar year-end close that you guys can run. And again, on the, on the payable side, it zeroes out like the 1099 year-to-date information in the smart list report. Any other questions? Any questions online? Mr. Hunter, you do not get to ask a question. No. Okay. I was just going to ask, is it important to do a backup while you do the year in close? 